I'm Yolande Poirier from Oracle Technology Network, and I'm here today at Devox UK talking to Angela Caicedo. Hello. Hi. Hi. So, Angela, you've been doing a um, demo about uh, 3D and Raspberry Pi, and so tell us about it. So, yes, um, so I really like building demos. That's kind of my passion, and I think being an evangelist let me do that. So they give me the freedom to do whatever I want with technology, which is really great. Um, so nowadays we have the Raspberry Pi. It's a very cheap uh, kind of small computer. It's only like 35 is the expensive version. And you can really do a lot with it. So we have Java running on it. So we had to have Java SE embedded. And you can actually run, we just released Java ME embedded for the Raspberry Pi 2. Um, so it's actually pretty cool. And it, right now I have a SE installed. So I have things like JavaFX. So believe it or not, I can have a nice Java application using JavaFX technology. So what I wanted to do is I always think about nice looking user interface where the mm -hmm. user really get immersed in the application. And well, you have this small device that you can run Java. We have uh, screens, like touch screen, small touch screens. And what about getting some information about your environment, like sensors, right? So there are accelerometers, there are gyroscopes, there are a bunch of sensors that can give you a little bit of information about positioning. So I thought, okay, what about putting everything together? I mean, that's where things get interesting. Also hard, but that's when things get really interesting when you start putting things together. So um, with the Raspberry Pi, you have some um, pins that you can actually use, connect things to. Mm -hmm. So you have like the uh, general um, IO pins, you have WART pins, you have SPI, and you also have I square C. That is a kind of protocol that a lot of devices today are using. So, for example, the Wii Remote, the Wii mm -hmm. Motion Plus actually has an interface for I square C. So, eventually, my next project will to connect uh, Wii Motion uh, Plus to the Raspberry Pi to do something cool. We don't, I don't, I'm not <laughs> sure what, but we'll figure it out. I want to commit to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, right now, I have a simple accelerometer and a gyro in one chip. Um, it actually communicates using I square C to the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi grabs that information, that sensor information, and using to display um, the JavaFX interface. Um, I wanted, if you think about constrained devices, embedded devices, mm -hmm. it's really hard to have a 3D environment. I mean, it, it would be a little bit too much. So the idea was um, to use some techniques that were used uh, previously on, on actually game development, something like parallax, where you have your environment is actually created of multiple layers. The closer the layer is to you, it will actually move faster. So in that way, the farther away of the layer, the slower it moves, so it gives you an impression of a depth in the environment. So it actually kind of simulate 3D. So it's kind of a 3D kind of movement without really having to implement any 3D. Um, so that was kind of the whole idea of the demo. Just put things together, make a nice um, interface that can immerse the user into the interface. And this is actually the first um, part of the demo. What I'm going to try to do is hide components in the environment, so you actually have to discover. As things move, you can actually discover, for example, treasures in the environment, mm -hmm. things like that. So make a little bit of a game kind of application for this. Um, but yeah, the first part, the talk was about how to have this working. What do you have to have on the Raspberry Pi to enable I square C? But I actually find out that it's not enabled by default. So there's a couple of things that you have to do. Libraries, Java libraries that, that we have to talk to, to such devices. Mm -hmm. So there is um, actually available two libraries. One is the wiring pump. It's a C a native application that allow you to a talk to those devices, and on top of wiring Pi, there is another library that is called Pi for Java that ac actually encapsulate that wiring Pi um, and display provided with a Java interface. So programming for this is extremely, extremely simple. It's just a Java interface where you just say, okay, connect me to the bus, get me the device. I want to get the registry that has the accelerometer read it, and then you have. So it's, I mean, there's mm -hmm. a lot of things available for you. Um, on the other side, so that will be the hardware, hardware part. For the software part, so JavaFX, great way to manipulate images. So you know that in JavaFX, one of the features is to do binding in capabilities. So you can actually bind the layers and have them move. So as you change the binding variable, the, the, the layers will actually move accordingly accordingly to, to those changes. 
Another thing that JavaFX allow you that is it was really important here was multi-threading functionality. Mm -hmm. Because of course you have to have like a background process that is getting the sensor information. So you have to have that sensor reading all the time. So constantly you need to know what's going on with the sensor and you have to inject that information into your UI. So it's important to have a backend thread doing that. JavaFX provide you with that, with task. So, you know, it was a great way of merging different technologies to do something nice. Uh -uh. Maybe not very useful. I like doing uh, very <laughs> not very useful demos, but very cool demos. So that's the whole idea, to really have fun with technology. Well, it's a very also um, showing all the aspects of the technology. So even <laughs> if yeah. it's, it's cool and it shows all the aspects of the yeah, technology. Yeah, my friend was calling, was calling the, the Pi Pad. <laughs> <laughs> because it looks like an iPad, but it's powered by a Raspberry Pi. So it's a very <laughs> low price <laughs> Pi Pad. <laughs> so your game also moves, uh, and so you have the gyroscope? So yes, so, so what we're really doing is trying to get the information how you tilt the yes. device. So for that, I'm using the gyroscope is giving you the angular acceleration. So whenever I move, I get the angular acceleration. The problem with the gyroscope is as long as I move it, mm -hmm because I'm stopped, there is no more angular acceleration, right? So I don't have more reading from the sensor at that point. But the accelerometer will give me that extra information. So the accelerometer will actually measure acceleration against gravity. So the acceleration against gravity will be different when you tilt the device. So the gyro will give me the information, yes, you're moving. Once you stop, the extra information is being provided by the accelerometer that say, hey, yes, you're doing an angle against gravity, so you're still tilting the device. Because I need that information if I'm tilting the device, move, keep moving the user interface. So you really have to combine, uh, I really needed to combine those two um, uh, sensors to have an accurate reading of the environment. Great, so the, the, your session will be online <laughs> on Parlays, so <laughs> people can actually... Uh, it was very fun, it is, it's always fun to have, you know, play with technology and have a lot of fun. I like that. And create games. It's yeah, so I mean, and <laughs> on top of that, they pay me for playing with toys, so I love my job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for talking to us. Today. Thank you very much. Thank you.